Hello everyone. In this video, we will demonstrate a panel linking demo between three simplex fire alarm panels. This setup utilizes relays and initiating zones to connect the panels together. It does not require any programming software or special cards and can be done with nearly any kind of fire alarm panel. So let's jump right into this. In this demo network, the main panel is a simplex 4005. These conventional panels were first produced in the mid 90s and discontinued around 2014. The 4005 system consists of a 2099-9754 pole station, a 4903-9219 horn strobe, and a 4602-9102 annunciator. To the left is a simplex 4010. This is an IDNet addressable panel and was first produced in the late 1990s and was discontinued around 2014 like the 4005. Connected to this panel are a 499-9001 pole station, a 2098-9806 key test station, a 4903-9418 horn strobe, and a 4606-9101 annunciator. On the right is a simplex 4006, a small conventional panel first produced in the mid-2000s. On the 4006 system, we have a 2099-9769 pole station, a Wheelock ELHSW horn strobe, and a newer 4606-9101 annunciator. So here's a quick explanation on how the panels are linked and how they will activate each other. Suppose each panel represents a building, with the 4005 building in between the other two buildings. If there is a fire alarm on the 4005 system, it will activate both the 4010 and 4006 panels. However, both the 4010 and 4006 will only activate the 4005 whenever either panel receives a fire alarm. In other words, the 4006 cannot trip the 4010, and vice versa. As an added twist, the 4010 building has two stories, and each floor has its own zone, which is indicated on the 4005 system. This will be explained more in detail later, but for now, let's make some noise.
And that concludes the panel linking demonstration. Now let's take a look at how each panel is wired and how they trip each other. The Verizon 5 panel utilizes two relays and three input zones for the network. One zone is used to monitor the Verizon 6 system, while two zones are used to monitor the 4010 system. One relay each is used to trip the other two panels on the network. The Verizon 5 has some custom equations programmed to process the alarms it receives. All of the zones local to the Verizon 5, like the 2099 pole station, will activate the relays to trip the other panels. But if the alarm zone is monitoring another panel, then the relays will not be activated. Doing this will prevent a redundant alarm signal from being sent to the other panels. So every panel only receives one alarm event. On the 4010, one zone and two relays are used for the network. Since the panel is addressable, the initiating zone is connected to an addressable module, a 4090-9001 IAM. This IAM monitors alarm events from the 4005. Meanwhile, the two onboard relays will activate depending on what floor has a fire alarm condition. Like the 4005, these events are controlled with custom equations. The 499-901 pole station acts as the second floor alarm, while the 298-9806 key switch is acting as the first floor alarm. This way, the 4005 can display which floor on the 4010 is an alarm, as seen in the demo. Lastly, the 4006 uses one zone and one relay for the network. Unlike the other two panels, the 4006 is much simpler and doesn't support custom equations. When any alarm condition occurs on the 4006, the alarm relay activates an input zone on the 4005. One zone on the 4006 is dedicated to monitoring alarm events from the 4005. When it comes to resetting the network, the 4005 must always be reset first. This is a small oversight in programming, as the relays tripping the other two panels will only shut off with a system reset. If both relays were configured to shut off on alarm silence, then all of the panels can be reset regardless of the order. Both relays on the 4010 are programmed to shut off upon an alarm acknowledge, and the 4006 alarm relay will shut off with alarm silence. A nice feature on all three panels is they will abort system reset if there is an active fire alarm condition. This prevents an infinite loop anywhere on the network, which can be a problem with this kind of panel linking. Altogether, this makes for a solid and stable panel network. And that's it. Panel linking does occur on real fire alarm systems, although they tend to be uncommon. Fire alarm networks in general still have their quirks, and even when using relays and monitor inputs, careful consideration is needed to ensure stability and functionality. A simple panel link like this can be achieved by anyone owning more than one fire alarm panel. With advanced panels, there is a higher degree of capability, without the need for software or external hardware. If you have any questions or comments on panel linking, feel free to post them below. But until next time, have a nice day!